Good evening. My name is Anish Mohanty. First of all, I'd like to thank my dad for bringing up some painful memories from the past. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I'm a junior in high school. I play piano. And now you can know that I'm very passionate about film. And I like to be politically aware. So first, I just want to talk about why we're here today. Towards the end of the summer of 2017, my parents and I departed on a trip to India to visit an orphanage I knew little about. I was told the stories of the children and their passion for dance and music and art, which would intrigue any young creative soul. My parents had met them when they came to America a few years ago, and their comments made me excited to meet the bright, exuberant children that I had heard so much about. As I said, I'm passionate about film. The purpose of this trip was to document the experience of children at Adruta Children Home. Upon my arrival, a long, lethargic car ride left me with a distinct urgency to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I did, and I walked down the hall, and I entered to find not a toilet, but a series of vines trickling down upon me from above. My eyes, following these vines, glanced downwards and noticed a hole in the ground. And at this moment, I felt a shock. All of my aristocratic ignorance had disappeared. Oh, how we take our luxuries for granted. Days earlier, I complained about slow Wi-Fi as I scrolled through Twitter while watching TV and FaceTiming my friend. Millennials. I complained about the heat while turning off the fan at full blast. So this was the first of many manifestations elucidating life outside the first world vortex. Over the next few days, I met many children with tragic backstories and attempted to understand their experiences. There had been little girls left on the side of the road at birth. There had been children abused by their parents at infancy to the point of physical, mental, and psychological disability. Some children were found in trash cans. Luckily, the living ones could be taken to Adrutha. It broke my heart to learn how horrible the world could treat such innocent children, but something broke my heart even more. Their smiles, they made me feel lacrimose. Deprived of any opulence or luxury in their lifestyles, sharing their limited food and clothing and beds with other kids, they still smile. I get upset when our Wi-Fi slows down, or I've gotten mad when my mom makes me drive the Nissan Leaf because I can't go as far as I want when I hang out. But back at home, my lackadaisical whimsicality prevents me from pursuing a train of thought that traverses the unknown. Anything I didn't directly experience or interact with didn't concern me, which was exactly why this was the revolutionary experience that elucidated the struggles of the world to me. But it's not something that we can all experience. I had to fly all the way to India to understand and try to empathize with this pain. What you know about Adrutha is what we tell you about them today. You might not be able to experience or properly empathize with that horrible, horrible anguish, but you can choose how to shape our world's future. And you can do that by following the examples of Professor Aditya Mohanty and Jogesh Pathi, who spoke earlier. The passion of these two men, instrumental in their respective scientific fields, dedicated to the promises of civil servitude and philanthropy, will always resonate with me for as long as I pursue this goal of generating prosperity to those left behind in this world. These are two men who have inspired this project and whose humility and astonishing achievements will leave a mark on this world long after today. I am often consumed by vehement remorse that my degenerate ignorance often fills me with selfishness or inability to think beyond what deteriorates my own agenda. But as I, as I attempt to follow in the path of two amazing people, I find myself becoming a better human being. But back to the children themselves. Never in my life has there been a moment that encapsulated such hopefulness and hopelessness, such love and hate, such sympathy and empathy, such humility and pride. But when I reached Adrupa, every moment was encompassed by the bittersweet juxtaposition of flowers arising from the ashes. That's what they are. Every girl and boy I met is, in one way or another, the product of a psychological firestorm that left them where they are. But as the ashes settle, however, they attempt to arise from the ground and surpass the ash to bloom beautifully. You know, my whole life has been full of inspiration from men like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Steve Jobs, Larry and Sergey, people who seek to advance humanity beyond where we are today through pioneering innovations that replicate the revolutionary significance of those of Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller. 
Elon Musk, for example, seeks to save the planet we live on and spread our societal reach to become multi-planetary, while trying to eliminate carbon emissions and slow the rate at which our Earth warms. Jeff Bezos seeks to redefine every aspect of modern technology and optimize the way we interact with entertainment, culture, and even information. But how can we be so focused on improving every aspect of advancing humanity forward when there's so many in this world who haven't caught up to where we are today? Which brings me to my conclusion. We are present in the heart of the world, residing in the capital of, te of technology and innovation. We immerse ourselves in lifestyle in the highest income per capita region in the world, spending billions pursuing technological endeavors, fighting for political reform, and entertaining our desires at the swipe of a screen. <coughs> but we are of the same species as everyone else. Is it not our duty, as quintessential hallmarks of the best the world has to offer, to provide for those fighting to survive? If we aren't willing to invite ourselves to aid the creation of a world inclusive of humanity, encompassed by both ends of the societal spectrum, if we aren't willing to unite ourselves with the humans less fortunate than us <clears throat> by reducing our opportunity imbalance, then how can we even consider ourselves to be humans? This is my documentary.